Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study titled, The Millennial Kingdom is a Jewish Kingdom. This is part of our extended study of the Millennial Kingdom of Jesus Christ from Revelation chapter 20. And you can find all of our Revelation studies at BBFOhio.com as well as on our 24-hour radio station at BBFOhioRadio.com. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to BBBFOhio at Yahoo.com or by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And any of this information is always available at BBFOhio.com. So now we begin our two-part study titled, The Millennial Kingdom is a Jewish Kingdom. All right, let's get into our study. Jewish Kingdom is what we're talking about tonight. The Millennial Kingdom is a Jewish Kingdom. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for everyone coming out tonight to learn your word, Lord. And we've enjoyed the time of fellowship. We've enjoyed the singing and the prayer. And we just want to learn something from your word and have the Holy Spirit teach us. Lord, it's wonderful to be able to know something about our future. And uh, know it comes from an infallible source. And so we thank you for all these things and ask your Holy Spirit to teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, this is a study that's stemming from, coming out of our study of Revelation chapter 20. And uh, we've done a number of studies now about the Millennial Kingdom. And just so you understand, the Millennial Kingdom is our future home. Uh, We... We will be raptured at any moment. We will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. We will receive reward or watch our works burn. And some will be saved so as by fire, but they will be saved. But uh, believers will be rewarded and then we'll enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we will all saddle up and come back with Jesus. And He will return to destroy the Antichrist world system that you read about and study about in the Great Tribulation period, the Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. And then at that time when He returns, He sets up a kingdom. This kingdom is a thousand year kingdom. We call it the Millennial Kingdom. Now here's another map, if you didn't notice on the previous screen, Today, Israel takes up about this much of their land, and even that's pockmarked with the West Bank and Gaza given over to the Palestinians. One day, that will be the size of the nation of Israel. Amen. Is Mecca inside of Israel? I'm not even sure. That's interesting. Yeah, look that up. The point of this study is plain and simple. Millennial Bible texts all teach that a Jewish king rules the world from Israel. Amen. 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 How many of you heard these people talk about, you know, the Jews want to take over the world, control the world? Yeah, Yeah, the uh, protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Heard of that? A couple of you? There's this claim you'll hear that the Jews control everything and they want to take over the world. Well, you know, Satan always counterfeits everything. He's the counterfeit. And Satan is counterfeiting the truth with this lie. Because there is coming a day when a Jewish king will sit on a throne and rule the world. (laughs) But it's not going to be, his last name's not Rothschild. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn your Bibles, let's start in Zephaniah chapter 3. We're going to have a little Bible study tonight. Of course, we do that every time we get together, amen? But we want to go to Zephaniah chapter 3. We're going to look at a few verses that tell us a little bit about this kingdom to come. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, thy kingdom come. You know how many times people have said that prayer and had no idea what they were saying? His kingdom's going to come. Amen. It's not just some pie in the sky thing that you pray to make yourself feel spiritual. His kingdom will come. Zephaniah chapter 3, 
We're going to go verse by verse, but I'll have you read along with me from time to time as you go from 14 through 20 in Zephaniah chapter 3. Begins in verse 14, says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Is there any doubt that this is about, it rhymes on purpose, Israel? Amen. <laughs> is there any doubt? Look at your verse there. He tells you who he's talking to, right? Do you know there are people who teach that's not really for Israel? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's spiritual deception. It's not an intellectual thing. These people who reject what we're studying tonight, it's not intellectual. Amen. They're not dumb people. Amen. It's a spiritual thing. Read verse 15 with me. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. Do we agree that Jesus is this King of Israel? Amen? Amen? Read verse 16. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. Who's he talking to? It's Israel. Jerusalem is the capital. Should be today. Always will be. Amen. Jerusalem. Zion. That's a reference to the city of David in Jerusalem, or in, in Jerusalem and in Israel. Read verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will say... He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in His love. He will joy over thee with singing. Amen. Just think about that. <laughs> Let that sink in. That's talking about the King. The Lord is the King. Amen. He will save. He will rejoice. It says the Lord thy God. How many of you know Jesus Christ is the only Savior of the world? Amen. God is the Savior of the world. Amen. Jesus is God. Amen. Verse 18, read it. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. We'll, we're not getting into this, but we'll, we'll read elsewhere where they'll look upon him whom they pierced. Amen. Now watch as this future Israel, future Israel, is avenged. Israel today is in the land for a purpose. But there will come another dispersion. There will be another diaspora where they will be driven out one more time yeah. for a tiny little bit. Amen. And then they will be regathered one more time and that will be the last time they will have to, have to be regathered. Amen. And watch as this future Israel is avenged and rules over every land. Amen. See? There will be... This in a nutshell, just so you don't lose where we're at. During the tribulation period, we're getting ready to see this. Israel is going to think that they're in the kingdom. You understand that? Yeah. During what we call the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, they make a covenant with death and hell. But it's not advertised like that. <laughs> That's not what the newspapers will say. They will believe that they've made a covenant with the Messiah. Yeah. He's an anti Messiah. Right. Antichrist. Amen. So they think they're going into the kingdom and they end up going through hell on earth, literally. And that's what the seven years that we call the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, that's what it's all about. It's about God judging. Israel and the false Messiah system that they marry themselves to by covenant. Amen. And that's why Israel will be judged. And we've covered this other study, so I'm not going to get in depth right now, but I'm just giving you this for backdrop and background. During that period of time, two-thirds of Israel will be destroyed. Yeah. A third part, we're told, will be saved. The Bible says all Israel will be saved, but it's all Israel that's left yeah. at the end of that seven year period of time. They will be saved and they will be avenged. And then that begins the millennial kingdom. And from Israel, 
your Jesus, my Jesus, is going to sit on a throne in Jerusalem, and from there He will rule the world Amen. with righteousness. Amen. How many of you see what's going on today? Turn on the news and see what's going on. What did Trump say today? What did Hillary say today? What kind of scandal going on today? What kind of investigation? Who's Hillary selling things to today so she can get money for a Clinton Foundation? What newspaper put out nude photos of Trump's wife today? Who did Trump say this about? And what did Trump say about this person? Was it a lie? Was it the truth? There's coming a day when we're going to have a king who will be beyond scandal. There will be no special counsel or FBI investigations. It will be, it'll be a kingdom of righteousness. And he will be the king of Israel. And it says here in verse 19, it begins by saying, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. That means all that came against Israel are finished. Amen. And I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. Amen. <laughs> you can read about this in Joel 3 and other places, but this is great. Uh, verse 19 ends by saying this. Read it with me. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Wow. Jews have been all over the world. And they've been persecuted all over the world. Yeah. You can go into South America. You can go into Africa. You can go up here in North America. You can go to Europe, go to Russia, Australia, any part of the world. And you will find in history, since the time that God kicked them out of the land, they've been there and they've been persecuted. They've been there and they've been put to shame. Yep. And God's going to have a payday. Amen. And they, as a nation, will have a king over them that will rule every land. Amen. Every land. I love it. Israel is avenged. Amen. I want to throw this in just so, again, you understand. Today's Israel is wicked. But you better not cross them. Amen. You better not curse them. Amen. Not your job. Amen. Amen. You go over there, you preach to them. Amen. Preach Jesus. Give them a gospel tract. Pray for them. But you better not curse them. Amen. Amen. God's going to deal with them. Tel Aviv is Sodom and Gomorrah today. Amen. The Bible says during the tribulation, He actually refers to Jerusalem as Sodom. So there's a lot of wickedness in Israel. And you talk about the government. The government's filled with Illuminatus and you know Freemasons and all that, just like our government. You better watch your mouth. Amen. Tell the truth, fine, but don't curse them. Amen. Don't turn against them. Amen. Christian denominations in America are cursing Israel. Do you know that? Yeah. Just look it up sometime. You want to learn it. The BDS movement, the divestment it's not just about finances. It's about totally divesting Israel of its right to exist. And it's the United Methodist, the Presbyterian Church USA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, Roman Catholics, and even apostate Baptists are doing that. Yeah. This, these are the days of apostasy. Yeah. Cursing Israel. Just flipping God's word the bird. That's what they're doing. Israel is avenged over all the people of the earth. Amen. Look at verse 20. It starts saying, At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. Read that with me. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen. How many of you believe it's going to happen? All right, because if you don't, you might as well not believe you're saved either. Right. Yeah, Amen. Amen. If you don't believe God's going to do this, what makes you think He's going to take you to heaven when all you're basing that on is His Word? Yeah. Same Word. Amen. Same God. Amen. Amen. I, I believe both. 
I believe both. I believe He's going to do this. I believe I'm saved. I believe when I die, if I drop dead right now, I would go to heaven. I believe if the rapture took place right now, I wonder, would this place be empty? You better have your faith in that Word. And your faith better be in the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection and nothing else. Amen. Nothing else. This has never happened. What we just read. God's Word is sure. And if it's never happened, it's gonna. <laughs> It is future. Amen. You say, that's obvious. It isn't obvious to Christian seminary professors. They're out there teaching it's a past thing or it's not even literal. Blind as bats. Cemetery, that's right. I want to answer this question, but I've got to answer it several times. Why is this study so important? Because it's biblical. Is that enough? Amen? Amen? It's biblical. If God tells us something, then it is important. Amen. There's a passage in Genesis, and I think the guy's name is Anna. Anna. And he, he goes out and he finds some donkeys in the wilderness. I have no idea why God told us that. But you know what I do? I read it. And when I've taught through that, I teach it. It's there. And I tell you the same thing I know. I don't know. But I think one of these days when we get to heaven, God's going to tell us why He put that in there. Amen. And there's going to be a reason for it. Amen. Why did I need to know I ain't went out and found some donkeys? Well, Greg, I'll just sit there and listen. If it's in the Bible, I believe it's important. Amen. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. I want to have Samuel's attitude. If you haven't done this before, take note or open your Bible right now and underline what I'm about to read to you. 1 Samuel 3.19, this is a great attitude. This is a young boy, by the way. Nick, Mick, Dre, Noah, all you young... John, Johnny, Steve, all you... Charlie, all you... It's a good attitude for everybody, but I had to pick out some of the boys. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and he did what? Let none of his words fall to the ground. Amen. <laughs> what? He found mules. Mules, donkeys. Okay, I'm sorry. She's going. <laughs> She's being biblical. Acts 17:11. He found mules. So that's the first thing God said, Greg. He found mules, not donkeys. But we want to have Samuel's attitude. Yet, to be a preacher, you have to learn the skill of ignoring. <laughs> Read this orange with me. Let none of his words fall to the ground. I take that seriously. I'm telling you, don't skip parts of the Bible that you don't like. Don't just read 12 verses your whole life. A lot of Christians, they have choice little verses they always pick up and they don't read the Bible. And that's why I believe this study is important. Why is this study so important? Well, another answer is this is our future. Amen. Think about that. God is telling us what life will be like during our own future existence. I remember when I was a kid and just would ask questions sometimes about what it's like to be a grown-up. And it's funny how many times people didn't want to answer and they just said, just enjoy childhood. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But it's not that way with us. When we talk to our Heavenly Father, He doesn't just say, just mind your business. He says, oh, you're going to love it. <laughs> but Christians spend most of their time ignoring it. What He's told us. And that's why this study is so important. It's revelation. If you haven't learned something from the Word of God before, then to you, it's a revelation. Isaiah 64, 4 says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, 
what He hath prepared for him that waiteth for Him. Amen. Amen. That's, true. <laughs> Just, that's another meditative verse. Let's sit and think about that. Think about that. He's revealing to us a little bit, but we can't even imagine what else there is to it. Why is this study so important? Ignorance and rejection of this truth has been destructive. Amen. Amen. It's important. Rome's error on this point has led her to try to build her own kingdom. Right. Listen, you go back and you read the stories about the Crusades, for example. They weren't trying to free the Holy Land for the Jews. Amen. I've heard people actually say that's what they thought the Crusades were. <laughs> Rome believes that it should rule the world. That's why the Pope is head of a state. They have their own flag, their own constitution, their own government, their own bank, everything. And they believe that they should rule the world. We've gone through that in our studies of Revelation 17 and 18. And for that reason, Rome has been involved in war and has killed millions of people just like us. You know, you hear people say, oh, look, the Christians, they, the Christians have killed as many people as the Muslims have. No, the truth of the matter is, Christians have been killed by Rome. Amen. That's right. And people don't get that. And if you don't get this truth straightened out, then it may not be Rome, it may be some other cult that you join where you try to conquer the world. And I like to call them bloody kingdom builders. Because every time they start to build a kingdom on the earth, it gets bloody. Yeah. Right. Destructive. The results have been bloody and disastrous. Who persecutes Christians? Watch this. Psalm 119, 139. My zeal hath consumed me because, watch this, mine enemies have forgotten thy words. You will find Christians being persecuted by Bible rejectors. Amen. And when they reject the Bible, it leads them down the path where for some reason or other they end up killing Christians. Yeah. That's what happened to Muhammad. Muhammad rejected the Bible, started having these seizures, thought he was demon-possessed, and his wife's uncle comes along and says, No, Mo, that's not a demon, that's an angel. <laughs> and so he's illiterate, he can't read or write, so he starts telling people what his visions are, they write these things down. Then he starts all of a sudden getting uh, uh, these words from God when he wants to have sex with a woman. And he, God decides, oh, okay, you can have more than one wife. And, and then he wants a girl that's underage. And God gives him another vision or dream. And then he wants to kill a bunch of people where he had first said, we don't kill people. And then God gave him another vision and says, well, now you can. Right. See how it works? Think about this too. They reject His words and they persecute Christians. But think about this. How often these false religions always claim to get their revelation from an angel. The Bible says that though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, let him be a curse. And here you have Muhammad's got an angel telling him all this stuff. So he ends up being able to kill as many people as he wants, have as many women as he wants, and all that. Guess who else did that? Joseph Smith. Amen. His was named Moroni. Should have named him Moron. Right. <laughs> Guess who else does that? You may not know this, but the Watchtower Society, their governing board claims to have angelic uh, information transferred to them somehow or other. They don't explain how it works. I used to think it was the fax machine or something. but <laughs> They will persecute you when they've forgotten God's words. Why is this? One more. One more. Why is this study so important? Heresy begets heresy. When you get off on something like this, you get off on other things. I believe, this is the connection I'm making in the end times we're in, I believe the final apostasy is directly linked to the rejection of the gospel and its implications, see, which is the salvation of Israel. Do you understand? In the Old Testament, when it talked about a new covenant, it was talking about Israel. It was talking about giving Israel a new heart 
so that Israel could dwell in the land in obedience and in peace and under the King Messiah. Jesus' primary cause in Matthew 15, 24 says, But He answered and said, I am not sent but unto the what? Lost sheep of the house of Israel. <laughs> See, Jesus, Jesus, He loves you. But you have to understand, when He came, His first primary cause was the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You and I were grafted in. Amen. Romans 11.17 says, You and I, we are a wild olive tree. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, that's you and me. Amen. So don't forget your place in prophecy. Amen. See? That's why all this is important, understanding your place in prophecy. In the next verse, there's no place for anti-Semites. Amen. I don't believe you lose your salvation for being anti-Semite. I question your salvation when you're an anti-Semite. See? Boast not against the branches. That's Israel. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. You are grafted in. We're thankful. We praise God. But we don't get arrogant. We remember how grateful we ought to be. We ought to have hearts of thanksgiving. And we ought to look at those Jews who reject the Messiah with pity. Paul looks at the Jews and even says, if it were possible that I could then go to hell for them in their place, I'd do it. Everyone who turns against Israel ends up in apostasy. Every one of these denominations I've talked to you about they're turning against Israel. They also have sodomites in the pulpits. That's right. yeah. They also preach false gospels. Amen. They preach stuff like getting to work, uh, heaven by works. Right. They preach all kinds of heresy and apostasy. It goes hand in hand. In light of this, we must receive this truth about Israel, what we're studying tonight. I'm just telling you, you better open your heart and your mind to what the Bible says about Israel and the fact that your future is to rule and reign with Jesus Christ in Israel over the world. Amen. I kind of find it hard to believe anybody can hate Israel. Right. Israel gave us the Bible. Amen. Israel gave us Jesus. I mean, Israel is a home base for the kingdom we're going to be in. Real quick, a reminder of what happens in the return of Christ. Israel is attacked by the Antichrist. Just think this through. He's a, we read about it in Revelation 12. He's a, Israel is attacked by the Antichrist, but all Israel that remains at that time is saved. And then there's the judgment of the nations. We don't have time to read it all, but it's in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And it's about Israel. Jesus says, you did these unto me when he did it unto my brethren. And he's talking about his brethren. He's talking about his blood brethren, the Jews. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, Tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.